I am the chief exorcist of the Vatican. My position was appointed by the Pope. It was actually a real job in the Vatican. Hello there everybody and thank you for tuning in to another video here on Armor of God. This time I'll be talking about the Pope's exorcist and as you know this channel is where I talk a lot about exorcisms, spiritual warfare in details and in general as well as sharing a lot of interview clips from various experienced exorcists to help us in our battles against the powers of darkness. Now back to the Pope's exorcist. First and foremost, The Pope's Exorcist is a Hollywood movie, and as real-life exorcist Father Vincent Lampert always says in his interview, Hollywood movies always focus on the power of the devil and how scary the devil is when in reality he is, and Father Lampert's own words, a coward and a cockroach who fears the light. All those things that people see in movies are real. Those things do happen. The difference is, I think, that the movie industry is more focused on what the demonic is doing, but in an exorcism, the church is more focused on what Jesus is doing. Drawing from the real father Gabriel Amorthus, two memoirs, an exorcist tells his story, and an exorcist, more stories. The Pope's exorcist takes some creative liberties with its central figure as well as the circumstances around his exorcisms. While its first act is grounded in some semblance of reality, the third act decides to go to a very fantastical place, putting to shame anything seen in other genre films like The Exorcist. The characters in The Pope's Exorcist are similar to their real-life counterparts in name only, and any resemblance to real figures like Father Amorth or The Pope or actual events is almost coincidental. Number 6 Father Amorth wasn't an exorcist until he was 61. Father Amorth lived a full life before he became chief exorcist of the Diocese of Rome in 1986 at the age of 61 and remained in the position for another 30 years until his death in 2016. He'd fought in World War II, studied journalism in Rome, and didn't have anything to do with handling possessions until he was much older, though according to his books, he did feel a calling to serve God at an early age. Crow's father Amorth, by contrast, is an established exorcist who has been saving innocent souls from possession for years by the time the Pope reaches out to him. Zipping around Rome on his lambretta with his Ferrari red socks, penchant for pop music, and full beard, Crow's father Amorth doesn't bear much resemblance to the real person. Being physically imposing certainly helps the actor to convey Amorth's robust vitality against the insidious forces of darkness, but Father Amorth could have been depicted as an older man. After all, Max von Sydow was just 43 when he portrayed a doomed elderly priest in The Exorcist, which the real Father Amorth cited as one of his favorite movies. Number 5. Father Amorth's exorcisms didn't include literal demons. The Pope's Exorcist is first and foremost a blockbuster and draws very loosely from Father Amorth's life. In his first book, Amorth famously said that out of 100 cases, only two might actually involve possessed and necessitate his intervention. While Amorth did see things that have confounded all of science and all of medicine during the 100,000 exorcisms he supposedly performed, they didn't involve poltergeists, spirits, or the sort of demons shown in Crow's exorcist movie. That was not an exorcism. The exorcism genre has needed to up the ante ever since the original The Exorcist movie, with more jump scares, disgusting visuals, and demonic manifestations to stay relevant as horror tastes change. Watching Crow's father Amorth wage war against actual demons and other phantasmagoria is certainly entertaining, but was never rooted in the real father Amorth's exorcisms. He did claim to have seen someone levitate, however, and there's plenty of that in the Pope's Exorcist, highlighting the fact that, like so much that's inexplicable and ephemeral, exorcisms are a practice open to interpretation. Number 4. The plot of the Pope's Exorcist is an original story. Though the Pope's Exorcist is based on thousands of Father Amorth's accounts of possession, screenwriter Michael Petroni cherry-picked pieces from his books rather than adapt one particular exorcism. The entire plot of the movie, in which Crows Amorth travels to Spain to save a 10-year-old boy possessed by the devil, as well as the Vatican conspiracy, is all fictional. 
Father Amorth did, at one point, insist that traces of the devil had been seen in the Vatican in the early 80s, but that was simply the presence of temptation and sin, rather than anything resembling something from the Da Vinci Code. The major demon in the Pope's exorcist is Asmodeus, who wants to use Crow's body to raise hundreds of fallen angels to invade the Vatican in a world-ending apocalypse. Father Amorth never faced such an incredible adversary, but felt his work was significant enough that the personal battle between the possessed and their demon infiltrator was just as important. Number 3. Father Amorth wasn't a badass demon-hunting superhero. In the very opening of The Pope's Exorcist, Father Amorth travels to a small Italian village to exorcise a demon from a possessed man, eventually transferring it into a pig brought along for the ritual. Once the demon, who Father Amorth identifies as Satan, is sent into the pig, he shoots it with a shotgun. This scene establishes Crow's Father Amorth as more of a demon-hunting badass than the real priest, an amalgamation of Van Helsing with Dirty Harry. While it's true, Father Amorth was an unconventional exorcist with somewhat controversial methods, he wasn't the rugged gunslinger Crow makes him out to be. Crow breaks down doors, goes on high-speed chases on his lambretta, fires guns, and generally feels more like a biblical ghostbuster than a priest. At least with the movies involving Ed and Lorraine's ghost cases, such as The Conjuring, there's an effort to make the couple feel like real people in extraordinary circumstances, while the Pope's exorcist suggests vampires, werewolves, and other supernatural forces should appear as well. Number 2. Father Amorth never allowed himself to be possessed. The real Father Amorth fought to end others' possession and never allowed himself to be possessed in order to accomplish this task. Yet in the Pope's exorcist's over-the-top ending, Crow's Amorth allows Asmodeus to enter his body so that he can perform a version of his pig trick from the opening scene of the film. After possessing Father Amorth, the other priests are able to use him as a vessel to extract the demon in a pile of demonic goo. The real Father Amorth died in 2016 and only sold the rights for the film adaptation in 2015 because he believed in the commitment of the producers to faithfully and respectfully show how he served the Catholic Church. The script went through several iterations, and it's likely that he never even knew that Crow's Amorth would be possessed himself. For a movie that includes references to Reagan's infamous exorcist spider walk and lots of CGI demons, it had already strayed far enough from Amorth's claims to push it into fantasy. And finally, number one. Father Amorth never became part of a demon hunting team. After defeating Asmodeus, the Pope's exorcist ends with the Cardinal instructing Father Amorth and a young Spanish priest to seek out the remaining 199 unholy locations on earth and exorcise any demonic presence they find. Father Amorth had priests assist him during his exorcisms but never assembled a holy version of the Avengers, where globetrotting adventures ended in saving the world from the forces of darkness. Clearly, this ending is intended to set up the Pope's Exorcist for a sequel depending on how well it performs at the box office. Despite taking great liberties with Father Amortha's personality and vocation, it's clear that Crow enjoyed himself and found the priest's unusual life very compelling. If the Pope's Exorcist does get a sequel, fans can expect even more artistic license taken, which is just as well, because trying to adhere to historical accuracy wouldn't be nearly as entertaining. I am the chief exorcist of the Vatican. My position was appointed by the Pope.